Welcome back. You're watching On The Record with me, Shireen Bhan, and I'm in conversation with DLF's KP Singh. In many ways, one would argue that what DLF has been able to do, especially in the NCR region, is create islands of prosperity. Uh, you know, these are gated bubbles which are disconnected from what's actually happening outside, which is no fault of yours. Is that something that you see changing? Do you have hope or confidence that we're at a point where the urban infrastructure is going to keep pace with the kind of development that we are seeing private developers do? Unfortunately not. I've written a paper on it and I requested media to bring it on because please understand this situation. That why this, firstly, just I'll take a few minutes of you to explain why the state is like this. Because in 58, then government in yeah. 1958. Nationalized. Firstly, I'll say in 53, 53, 54, the then government adopted a resolution called socialistic pattern of society as a way of living, mm. where the slogan was, think small and manage shortages. So that became a direction to everyone, the planning commission. That's why every industry you go, those days you cannot make more than 10,000 fan, you cannot, there were restrictions on the, because you have to think small and you manage shortage by licenses and permits. Yeah. Unfortunately, the same thing they applied to urbanization, which should have never been done. Mm. Because if you think small in urbanization, you make narrower roads, you think in apartment, you need smaller role, a smaller apartment. You think that there'll be only apartment will need maybe one car, one motorcycle, one cycle. Not realizing is democratic India. The people are earning. So today, what is the status? Every apartment has got at least three cars. Yeah. What is, why this road? You said 12, 15 meters. Roads are required to be 24, mm. maybe 30 meters. Now, which is, there's no road because we have been trying and fault is where is the master planning defective mm. because master planning is still being done on myopic visions based on thinking is small and creating uh, and managing shortage whereas it should be now think big mm. and create bigger spaces mm. bigger road like what they are doing in the highways uh, uh, so in urbanization this aspect has not come up and this can only come when there's a direction from the central government and the state government together, because it's state subject. Yeah. And they understand, otherwise I see, frankly, mm. please understand, with our prime minister at the helm, he's a doer, he's action oriented. It's not $5 trillion to growth will happen. I can bet with anybody, more than $5 trillion will grow, because India has got a fantastic, uh, talented entrepreneurs mm. and young, mm. we'll grow. Yeah. But when you grow, what will happen to the existing infrastructure? There'll be massive migration from rural area. All the roads will be full of traffic. Mm. Now you can't uh, widen the road. Now to say widen means you have to demolish all the buildings mm. all around is impossible. Mm. So once a mistake is make urban infrastructure, it cannot be set right. Mm. And that is the biggest uh, lessons learned. Mistake to ho gaya. Now today, what do you do? How do you break uh, the, all the houses? You see what bulldozer, what they uh, go around. Can you do en masse uh, make it uh, drainage, water supply? So therefore, the, the lesson learned is give a central direction to think big, change the concept of master plan. Mm. Master plan composition must be visionary people, visionary developers. Because it can, you have a very good, competent bureaucrat, yeah. but they come for three, four years, five years. Mm. They are transferred out. How can you develop a vision in three, four years? Mm. And this is not only Delhi, they all over India. So this is the fundamental de de uh, uh, effect. So once this is realized at the top, mm. take it from me, at least future generations, back to yeah, but they will be at least able to get infrastructure mm. and they will be commensurate with the projected growth of 5 trillion. Mm. Otherwise, they, they will offside it. Yeah. So, so I'm, <coughs> with my experience, and I'm taken up the subject and said everywhere, that please do that. And secondly, you need new, new cities. As you say, McKenzie have projected Chicago. And new cities cannot come. No new Gurgaon can come because when you see, what, what happened to how I purchased the land integrated mm. is mind boggling. Mm. It took me 15 years. I used to be with every farmer. I, yeah. what, I, I did. 
No, driving, because, driving around. No, no, I will, <laughs> no, I will be with them, eat with them, or yeah. all arranging everything. Yeah. Nobody can do it. It's impossible. Mm. So therefore, what happens is, Nevada is a good example where government acquires the land, auctions it out to uh, a private sector. The development has, should be done by the private sector. Yeah. Only. So the government should but acquire. But the acquisition should be done by the government. Yeah, and I believe I'm, I'm, I'm told I, I was wanting to check that in the land acquisition law. Whereas this present government, about seven, eight years back, had brought this amendment yeah. and included the comp uh, land acquisition for, for townships. That's right. But that was deleted. Is it, now you can acquire land for highway infrastructure, mm. or, but not for townships. Mm. So if you don't, uh, if government is not empowered, how do you make the township? Yeah. So there'll be no township mm. unless government is fully empowered to acquire land, auction it out. Private sector, you cannot make it. But development of townships should be done by, by private sector. By the, by the private sector. As a partnership. Sector. Absolutely. We are going to take a break, but we continue our conversation with uh, DLF's KP Singh right after this. Welcome back. You're watching On the Record with me, Shireen Bhan, and I'm in conversation with DLF's KP Singh. I want to now talk about what you foresee as the future as far as DLF is concerned. Uh, Today, by market cap, uh, you know, India's largest real estate company. Uh, we, of course, have seen what you've done as far as Gurgaon is concerned. Is there a regret that perhaps the pan-India aspiration, if you had one, uh, remains unfulfilled? Is that something that you would like to see? No. You've already got partners like GIC on board. Uh, you know, what, what would you like to see, see as far as the future is concerned? The thing is, unfortunately, uh, real estate, people don't understand, is the most complicated business. Real estate is divided into two parts. One is land, purchase yeah. land and zoning it. That is the biggest, 90% problem. Once you have land, building is easy. No, there you can have building carried out by. You know, it is the land. The question is when you get to land, purchase and assembly to make a bigger area. All kinds of characters come, mafias and all. You deal with them, politics come. Now, we in DLF decided at that time we are best at in NCR only. So we actually expanded, then we have, uh, Rajiv was very smart, within two years, we thought that is not our forte, we can't deal with the political and all the people there. So, so he just came in, except I think Chennai and Hyderabad, a yeah. couple of people, but not all India. It is, it is foolish for a real estate company to all because you can't deal with all, all the people in all India. Be mm -hmm. where you are. It is, and we are, therefore, we have got a, we have got a very major land bank. Yeah. And we, are, we, we keep on, as you know, our buildings are better than the best. I wonder if you've been to our phase five? We, Not yet. Oh, oh my God, you should see, you <laughs> see, it is a different world. When you enter Camellia. Yes. Have you been to Camellia Yes, now? yes. But there's phase five. I wasn't sure which phase it was. <laughs> no, there, there's a Camellia golf course right. and all. Yes. Now, that is an example of what a development of 1,000 acres mm. should be in India. But we were, could do it only within, we couldn't do it any, any mm. outside. And I believe, therefore, this should be in complete refocus on making master plan completely differently hmm. and being thinking bigger spaces and provide but but what about accessibility and affordability i mean how many people can afford no, no, uh, coming, camellias I'm, or magnolias no, no i'm coming to that a successful master plan means for every section of society you create you must understand it's not physically possible even communism is not possible people to acquire now, for example, somebody wants to acquire an apartment here, it's expensive. But in a master plan, you make out areas where the labor force or middle income people are there, connect them to road network with the main center, develop that place as they are doing affordable housing, but should be done in a bigger way and should be done in, in a manner when, uh, that when people can afford, is a, a, demand is so huge. Mm. Every section of demand you have to understand, cannot be met by one category. So at the moment, um, like for the rural housing, I'm not talking about that, it's been done extremely yeah. well by the government. And regarding the other matter, it's a matter of need more development, you need more, uh, more, more people in, in it. As far as we are concerned, we are best at, best at doing something which is better than the best buildings, and undoubtedly, uh, when we get involved in doing something else, hmm. we have not di uh, diverted our attention. It becomes very easy to, to change your mind. Hmm. Simple di uh, uh, directed that whatever you're doing, do the best. And example is for you to see. 
You know, let me end by asking you, you've uh, not just spent the last 50 years uh, steering DLF, but I don't know how many people who don't know your story know about the fact that you spent a fair amount of your time in the army as well, which is where you actually got yeah. started uh, till you decided to quit the army and join your father-in-law and DLF. What would you say today if I were to ask you, have, have been the lessons or the do's and don'ts that have steered you to where you are? What is it that you would like to leave as advice to the generation see, that's watching? Uh, see, what actually, when I reflect back in life now, I don't think anybody has, has more twists and turns in my life. Twist, I don't know how it happened. Imagine I started firstly my education in Madrasa, in a small Madrasa in Bolinshire. From there I jumped off. Went to, I did my the, the graduation in Merit College. And from there what happened? There I became a horseman because I learned it. Completely different. And then I went to aeronautical engineering in England. Mm. Completely different. And from there, because I was a polo player, horseman, I switched on to for selection by senders for Indian Army, from the Army. I enjoyed Army, everything, nine, ten years. Look at so, mothers are to aeronautical engineering, to go to, is completely, the minute you come to the Army, I enjoyed every bit of it. I stood first in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the academy in, in, in Dehradun, and uh, I enjoyed every bit of my, till it came around that when I got married, I was very lucky to get married to a wonderful, family and a great lady, it, they, they had only two uh, uh, daughters, not sons, so father-in-law prevailed upon me that it's high time, they stop playing polo, and so uh, come and share a bit in business. So that's how I came, then I started manufacturing business, mm. electrical motors mm. and Miller battery. Thereafter, the family pushed me in 1975 to revive DLF again. They yes. were, they were totally closed. Yeah. So for how many different twists and turns you take in? But the biggest thing for me, it's a question, if I, uh, if a challenge, most difficult was, how do you buy land from feudal families mm. and how do you integrate it? It's the most difficult thing. And that won't credit, by the way. When we had, I had no money. Yeah. So I had, credit can only, money, land will be given to you on credit only one. When an owner has explicit confidence and faith in you, mm. in your integrity completely, so I had to earn that thing. Not working, I had to really earn the faith of people, but it happened. Gurgaon is a classic example. Yeah. Gurgaon would not have happened if I were not a, a, able to, the government never helped me to buy a, even a piece of land. I had to do it myself, with my own thing. And now today, you see how many, the, uh, to more than 12 lakhs are is, is exponentially growing every time. There's a win-win position. Half the revenue of Haryana State comes from, from, from Gurgaon. And as you know, this type of people saying uh, uh, that there's a catalyst for bigger employment. How many people's hmm. homes are there? How many new gen uh, generations have come around to bring businesses? So th that's why a city like this Gurgaon is a pace setter, catalyst. Hmm for creating more employment, for ensuring more income to the state, and for ensuring good homes, recreation, hospital, education centers. It's only a good city will do, not clustered up city, mm. not the way we're doing before. So I hope they can do it. I, I just appeal to, to them to change, their, to relook at their urbanization policy. Well, what's the next twist in the KP Singh tale? Next is my, my next is uh, how long I will keep on playing golf. <laughs> Even now I play golf. A lot of people get surprised. Uh, Coincidentally, my golf. Holes? Yeah, and my golf has improved. My friend tell me, he said, "What the hell are you doing?" Earlier, whatever I was doing, and the fact is this. I suppose when you are determined to do something, you see, I my one basic thing in my life. You ask me a question, and the thing is, somehow, I always had a burning desire in my life, even for small, whenever, I must be something. So it became a way of life with me. Obstacles came, 
Now it's a dark cloud. I never saw the dark. I saw the silver lining. The silver lining. So by nature, I, I became optimistic. Everything I do. So it for me it became. It, when somebody is 76, we saw oh, impossible to to develop Gurgaon. You can't. You have no money. You have, uh, laws are against you. Banks are forbidden to give you money. How uh, for blend? How the hell do you do that? I said no. Let's deal. So what looked impossible, I made it possible. Mm. So my life is based upon courage, conviction, always aim high, and try to make impossible into possible. That is my life. Well, impossible is nothing in the words of Mr. K.P. Singh. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here on the record. We wish you the very best of luck and congratulations once thank, again. Thank you, thank you. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of On the Record. From all of us here on the team for this week, goodbye. Thanks very much for watching.